August 1961, a time when the air crackled with jazz's electrifying pulse. The Village Gate in New York City was set ablaze with a triple marquee bill. While the quintet led by Art Blakey with Lee Morgan and Wayne Shorter and Horace Silver's equally formidable quintet featuring Blue Mitchell were part of this notable gathering. It is the wild convergence of John Coltrane's quartet and the enigmatic Eric Dolphy that snags our attention. Hidden away in the depths of the New York Public Library for the Performing Arts, a relic emerged, an auditory relic known as Evenings at the Village Gate, John Coltrane with Eric Dolphy. This scorched earth recording captured by Rich Alderson, the audacious engineer testing the club's new sound system, catapults us into uncharted dimensions. Once hailed as a horrifying demonstration of what appears to be a growing anti-jazz trend by the folks at Downbeat, Coltrane and Dalphy defied their naysayers with fearless abandon. They danced to the rhythm of their own souls, heedless of the dissonant murmurs swirling around them. At the heart of this remarkable album lies their rendition of Africa, an offering born from the transformative Africa Brass Sessions. This new material exudes a spirit of exploration, a sense of unearthing hidden treasures. Dalphy, that enigmatic multi-reed virtuoso with his inimitable prowess, adorns the musical landscape with unexpected leaps and fragmented lyricism, provoking the listener's senses. Tyner, an indispensable force in Coltrane's quartet for over a year at the time of this recording, emerges as a formidable, unifying agent between the saxophone and the drums. Faced with the formidable challenge of harmonizing with Jones's thunderous percussion while retaining his unique identity, Tyner rises to the occasion. His solos on impressions and favorite things stand as testaments to his indispensable role within Coltrane's quartet, now quintet, revealing his evolution as a vital component of their collective expression. This raw recording, captured by a single ribbon microphone, unveils the magic of Coltrane's Village Gate residency in 1961. The quartet, joined by the astonishing Eric Dolphy, casts a spell that binds listeners for a mesmerizing 80 minutes. Jimmy Garrison, the usual bassist, steps aside for Reggie Workman, except for the one live performance of Africa where Art Davis joins the group, creating an electrifying double bass lineup. Tyner's fingers dance across the keys, while Jones pounds the skins with fever, conjuring syncopated rhythms that reverberate through the soul. But it is Dolphy who casts an indelible spell. In the live rendition of Africa, Coltrane's tenor saxophone wails and whispers, soaring to unimaginable heights. His rapid scales and long melodic lines explore uncharted territory, punctuated by low register punctuations that rattle the senses. Workman and Davis engage in a musical duet alternating between arco and pizzicato, their distinct voices blending into a mesmerizing duet. Jones, for a fleeting moment, retreats, allowing them to shine in their extended play. After the bass solos, Coltrane and Dolphy engage in a contrapuntal dance, their voices intertwining with the roaring heartbeat of the rhythm section, a moment of pure transcendence. It's a shame that more live versions of Africa remain hidden, for it stands as a testament to the unbridled brilliance of this recording. In the realm of jazz, where chaos and genius collide, the convergence of remarkable talents, the birth of timeless compositions, and the pursuit of uncharted soundscapes defies the very essence of greatness. Evenings at the Village Gate John Coltrane with Eric Dolphy unearths a moment of unadulterated transcendence, a testament to the untamed spirits of these audacious musicians.
Let these resurfaced treasures be a rallying cry for generations to come, urging them to delve deep into the unknown and dance with the intoxicating madness of uncharted creativity. In part two, I'm going to discuss what Coltrane and Dolphy had to endure from their critics and from the JS police and how they successfully navigated that negativity. Thanks. Please subscribe. Please like. Please comment. Please share. And thank you for supporting my mission to keep jazz visible. Mm-hmm.